If this were your plant, would you want to cut the flowers off of it? That might sound crazy, but with certain plants, that's actually what you want to do. Now with this impatient, that's not the case, but with these caladiums, yeah, you actually do want to remove the blooms on them. So first you want to identify what is the bloom, on this case, on the caladium. It almost looks like an unfurled leaf, but it's going to be a little bit more bulbous, and it's not as uniform as an unfurled leaf. And once we identify these, we trace them down near the base of the plant, and we cut them off. Now the reason why we cut the blooms off of the caladiums is because caladiums are more grown for their foliage, and every bit of energy that they spend on these blooms could have been going to growing more beautiful leaves. So yeah, if you can identify these early and get rid of them, then the plant will continue to grow more of the foliage, and really that's what we want, but this isn't the only plant that we keep these rules for. Another good example of this is sweet basil. Once your sweet basil decides to focus its energy on flowers and seed production, it's not going to produce those delicious leaves anymore, or at least not as many. So if you are consistent about pinching off the developing flower buds, then your plant will last much longer and you'll get to harvest the delicious basil for a lot longer period of time. Another great example are coleus. Some people do like to leave the blooms on coleus, but I am one that I will pinch off of those blooms so that way we get more leaf production because, well, that's what's really pretty about coleus in my opinion. Now this practice is a little bit different than, say, deadheading, which we could save that topic for another video.